I'm with Wally Pfister, the cinematographer Oscar-nominated for Inception. This is your fourth nomination? This is my fourth nomination. Very good. You're uh, due. You're always due. a bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you met Christopher Nolan uh, for the first time on Memento. How did you two come to first work together? I had done uh, a film. I'd shot a film uh, called The High Line that, uh, that was at uh, Sundance Film Festival in competition in uh, 1998, I think. Um, and Chris was uh, at Slam Dance with his first film following. And, um, Is that the black and white one? Yes, correct, yeah. And so we had a chance meeting there because the same company was distributing both films and we happened to be at the same agency at the same time. So we had a, a, a brief, you know, uh, you know, hello there. Now, when and, you saw the following, did you mm, see some, some signs of, of talent there? Absolutely. I thought following was phenomenal. I, I thought it was a great film, and I, I also was struck by how good the photography was in the film, and Chris had shot it himself, and so I was like, yeah, that's kind of my sensibilities <laughs> in cinematography. Um, how would you describe that sensibility? Naturalistic, you know? I think we both really like a, a naturalistic style of photography. Um, I like to be motivated by, by what I see in real life, by natural light, whether it's you know, soft natural light from a window, or whether it's the street lights of an urban environment at night. I get my motivation from what I see naturally. And then, you know, you try to take it somewhere else. You augment or you, uh, you know, expand on that. Um, but uh, so that's what I saw in, in you know, in following. And, and it was a year later that Chris interviewed me for, for Memento. And uh, the way I like to put it, his first five choices weren't available. So he hired me to shoot the film. And... Uh, and the rest is uh, is history, as they say. Yeah, but the budgets kept going up, and uh, yeah. you know, eventually you were making The Dark Knight. I mean, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, and, yeah. and now um, Inception. Um, can you can you do you think you've st stuck with with that kind of philosophical approach through these enormous budgeted visual effects packed absolutely. movies? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I don't I don't think Chris and I I don't think our process is any different uh, now. Inception or The Dark Knight or Dark Knight Rises than it was with Memento. To us, it feels the same. Whether it's a, I know it sounds ludicrous, but whether it's a 25-day shooting schedule for $5 million or whether it's a 125-day uh, you know, schedule for however many hundreds of millions of dollars, um, our process remains the same, which is really, you know, he writes a, a, a screenplay and, uh, you know, I look at the screenplay and come up with my thoughts and ideas and then we speak together and uh, we sort of determine the way uh, that the camera will uh, and, you know, translate that onto, into images and, and put it on the screen in a way that it's, uh, it's best telling the story. What kind of changes have occurred? I mean, I know IMAX mm -hmm. is one al element that was introduced, yeah. um, and I believe that that's going to continue. You want to talk mm -hmm. about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that must have been an enormous... I mean, did you mm -hmm. have to work with other people, like IMAX people, to, to make that happen? Yeah, quite a bit. You know, Chris, it was, it was Chris's idea to, to shoot something in native IMAX after we had done Batman Begins um, and were preparing for Dark Knight. Um, had this idea he wanted to shoot in large format and to shoot in IMAX native uh, for our IMAX release and uh, I thought it sounded brilliant but but daunting and uh, so I started doing my research uh, back then and started uh, speaking to the IMAX people and trying to figure out how this would be possible for a, uh, you know for a, a studio picture um, and uh, a lot of people said it couldn't be done. <laughs> a lot of people were, were These talking are us huge out of it. Huge cameras. These are large cameras. They're about two feet long as compared to our 35 cameras, about half that size. Uh, the, the weight of the camera is about double. Um, and, and, they, and frankly, they really weren't accustomed to, uh, to using this format on you know, a, a dramatic studio feature film. Most of the IMAX films are 45 minutes long. Um, and here we were trying to do as much as we could. In the end, we, we shot about a little less than 30% of The Dark Knight on IMAX. And, and used it for the really big, big Used it for the big sequences. action set, set pieces and, and used it for the opening of the film, the bank heist sequence, which also showed as a, a prologue to the release of the film uh, several months before the film was released, which is a very clever uh, marketing idea of Chris's as well to get people to whet their appetites for for what we were going to put out that summer. Um, 
And, and so I think in the end, the IMAX was a great success, um, not only for us, uh, you know, the, the visceral experience of the film, but it also turned out to be a financial success as well, um, which is really sort of part of the magic of, you know, Chris Nolan's filmmaking. He's, he's able to tell these, you know, complex, densely layered emotional films, uh, but also keep the action sequences uh, exciting and, uh, and fun for audiences. Uh, so that that has, uh, you know, delivers in the box office. So there's going to be more of that, I understand, in, in the next we're, iteration of the trilogy. We're hoping like. to shoot uh, more of, um, of uh, The Dark Knight Rises in, in IMAX. Um, that's sort of a goal of ours right now. So we're, we're looking into that right now. We're testing and, you know, looking but not at the a camera whole systems film. again. Um, I doubt it's possible to shoot a whole film in IMAX. I think it's... It's impossible. very cost prohibitive. Yeah. And it's also, uh, it's still difficult to record sound. The cameras are very, very noisy. So oh. technically speaking, it's uh, it's tough to, to shoot That's that format to for an entire film. But look, we'd like to shoot as much of it as we can in IMAX. We love the IMAX format, and it's been good to us. So. All right. So now on Inception, I mean, most of people, you know, the questions, it, really it has to do with how did you accomplish some of these amazing feats of, of a visual daring do that mm. that required that the art department, the camera department, mm. and the visual effects people and the director all work yeah. together. Yeah. And I wondered if you could maybe break down, um, per, just to start with, mm -hmm. you know, the 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 mind blowing, mm -hmm. um, you know, city bending sequence and right. what would have been required there and right. how you right. how you guys executed that yeah. and and also the the incredible um, slow mo. Um, things exploding, mm -hmm. you know, right, kind of right, stuff. Because right. I know you had to do a kind of practical versus yes. digital kind of approach. Yes. Well, those those are particularly visual effects heavy sequences. Um, and and the explosion's probably a little uh, one that's uh, uh, easier to talk about because that is a combination of mechanical effect and, and, uh, and visual effect. And that's something uh, that, that Chris is so great at in these films. He doesn't rely heavily on uh, visual effects uh, unless it's a, a sequence that sort of requires that and in this case it was a marriage of of the two um, in this Paris um, cafe sequence uh, where uh, we had within the conversation that, that Leo and Ellen are having um, we use mechanical effects done by Chris Corbold who's a, the, the mechanical effects supervisor we've been working with since Batman Begins um, he set up air cannons with all kinds of confetti and cork and all these other lightweight safe materials to get everything kind of into the air and generated in the air. Also put put hard lines on a motorcycle on the tabletops and all these pieces. Um, and we set up five or six uh, cameras, including high-speed cameras, uh, these photosonics cameras that go up to 1,500 frames per second as, apparent to the, as compared to the normal 24 frames per second. Um, so we set up all multiple cameras to capture this whole uh, sequence and for the effects guys to put out there as much as we could. 